the basis of a lot of Western society is based on this concept of skepticism. So if we read philosophy going back hundreds of years, this was really a school that was adamant on questioning everyone and questioning everything. Right? So you can imagine that that could possibly lead to discoveries because you're not, you don't have shara sada over anything. And so you keep on questioning and questioning till you come to some conclusions. Nowadays, what we are experiencing is not just skepticism, but what is known as radical skepticism, in which even not only just the meta narratives about anything are questioned, but reality itself is questioned. What are known truths, they're also questioned. And so you can see some manifestation of this in terms of we cannot be sure if you are men here, and we cannot be sure if the women are women. You know, something basic as that, that is questioned as well. And because they reject any meta narrative, that includes religion, and what it has led to is a manifestation of Firauniya in terms of Anarabukum al Ala that. What I say and what I feel is reality, what we call lived experience, and anything else, we reject. Now, I'm mentioning this because, you know, even today, what we heard from the Quran is the Mushan is this insistence that we keep hearing about la rayba fi. It's exactly the opposite of skepticism. The Qur'an wants to bring certainty in our lives. This concept of yaqeen, that you should be sure, you should be certain about at least certain things in your life. And so this certainty, um, this is something that we covered in our Sahri Majlis as well. This yaqeen is on different levels. One, you know, is known as what we call ilmul yaqeen. That is just uh, your intellect or your shi'ur. It becomes content with what it understands. Right? So for example, if somebody tells you that fire is hot, now you haven't seen it, you haven't experienced it, but what you have know is that yes, there is some dhuwa, there is some smoke, so that must mean that there is fire somewhere and it's inference. You use inference to come to some simple, this is what Ilmul Yaqeen is. This kind of certainty is certainty, but it's the weakest form of certainty. And Rabbi Shaykh writes that if your Iman is stuck in this Ilmul Yaqeen realm, then it's like a candle in the wind. That, you know, one delil from some place where you unexpected will come and that's it. There goes your iman. Okay. A little higher level is what we call Ainul Yaqeen. Ainul Yaqeen, Ain, you know, to see something yourself. Um, when you see that there's actual fire there now, you know, you have seen it and your level of certainty from the smoke to actually seeing the fire increases. Ainul Yaqeen is a higher level of Yaqeen and certainty, but it is still not the highest form. If we are able to at least, in the, you know, when it comes to Sharia, when it comes to Quran and Sunnah, experience at least a level of Ainul Yaqeen, inshallah ta'ala, that is a little safer space to be in. But what Mashaykh 
aim for in their lives. Because if you know that Mashaikh is all about experiential. When the, it comes to deen, it's the experience of the deen. Right? So what they aim for is what is known as Haqqul Haqqul Yaqeen. Haqqul Yaqeen is when you experience something, like you see the fire, like Muhammad was, you know, putting that thing on fire yesterday. It's like you put your hand in there, that's all the experience you need. Now, even when people come and they tell you, no, fire is not hot. Like you can say whatever, you can bring all the lie and you can bring whatever evidences I know because I put my finger in the fire. And yes, I have experienced the fire. Now, nothing you say, nothing is going to affect. That is the level of certainty we need in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the level of certainty we need in this thing. Okay? And inshallah ta'ala, ba'iznillah, again, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the iman will be mahfud when a person gets to that level, that they have experienced it. Okay. Now the Quran again, like you know, you start with Surah Baqarah, Alif La Mim Dalik Al Kitab La Raiba Fi. Again, the same thing. There is no doubt in it because this doubt, this is the primary weapon of Shaitan. Nafs is all about committing sins, and it goes after sins that it loves, right? enjoyment, pleasure, whatever gives me the most pleasure. Nafs wants me to do that. Shaitan doesn't care about any of that. Shaitan wants to put doubt. He just wants to take us away from Allah. He is, you know, as they call him, Daku. He's like, he's a thief and he wants to take away our iman. So he will just put one doubt after another doubt after another doubt. Sometimes, you know, it starts little. You know, these are seeds of doubts are implanted. Little things. And then they grow till you start questioning. Again, the same skepticism. You start questioning this, and then start questioning this, and then start questioning this. Then you have questions about, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then you have questions about the Quran. And then you like start questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning the whole building that was erected of Iman, it collapses. Shukuk. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us this dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika, starting with what? Min al-shakki wal-shirki. Shakki wal-shirki wal-shiqaqi wal-nifaqi wa su'ila. Starts even before shirk. The dua is protect us from shak, from doubts. It's a killer. It's a killer. Doubts, you know, and, and I will argue that a lot of people today don't have shara sadr. They don't have that level of contentment when it comes to Sharia. I mean, it's they have to struggle in their mind. They have to build all of these, you know, facades in their in their mind just to keep the building erect. Yes, yes, and they have to convince themselves because none of us or some, you know, we haven't really experienced that halawat of iman. It just washes away all the sugar. We haven't put our finger in the fire yet. Okay. So the invitation there is from the Quran is to put your finger in the fire, metaphorically. Okay, don't go home and just put your finger in the fire. Metaphorically, it's, you, know, you have to experience it. You know, once you have experienced the closeness to Allah Taala, once those mushahidat are there, it doesn't matter what you know. In Punjabi, they say, "Namasla vich pasasano, kuch yar digal sunasano." Right? You know, like all of this. Masail, don't even like talk about this Masail to me. Because Yar Digal, you know, talk to me about my friend, my Yar. And it's interesting, two more points, inshallah, because we keep it short. That in Surah Baqarah, Allah Ta'ala says, La Raiba fi hudalil muttaqeen. That this is guidance for God conscious people, people who have experienced taqwa, Allah conscious. Right? And today, you know, Hafiz have read. The Quran is what? This Quran is Qudam wa Rahmah. Not only it is guidance, but it is a source of extreme blessing. For whom? For whom? For people lil muhsineen, people who have realized Ihsan. And we have spoken about this, those who have come to these majalis before. 
taqwa ihsan both of these talk about allah consciousness being god conscious taqwa has the jalal the majesty of allah ta'ala as its source so this is the khawf and khashiyat it's not just fear allah ta'ala no not 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 that kind of fear when we talk taqwa it's much much deeper than that I mean, fear, you know, you're talking arachnophobia, you know, there's a spider and that, not that sort of fear. Khashiyat and khawf. And on a very high level, and I'll get to that, and ihsan is what? Ihsan is, again, consciousness of Allah, you know, as elucidated in Hadith of Jibreel, أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى أَلَّمْ تَكُنْ تَرَى إِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ Right? It's consciousness, Allah consciousness in your mind. This has the beauty, the jamal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a source of it. Right? And you know, it's amazing, like look at this ayah. So it's not even guidance, but also source of rahmah. Rahmah, right? There is guidance, hudan lil muttaqin, but this is hudan wa rahmah. That not only do you get guidance, but you know, with beauty, right? I mean, Allah ta'ala has given us this aesthetic sense, source of rahmah. Source of rahmah, the same rahmah that that Adam alayhi salam was asking for, the same rahmah that Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam was asking for. وَإِلَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا رَحْمَةً So Ihsan has rahmat at the source of it, beauty, jamal of Allah ta'ala at the source of it. And Mashaykh will tell you that there's truth in it. Eventually, when you, inshallah ta'ala, when we realize these maqamat and darajat, you will notice and you will see then Jalal and Jamal and Khawf and Muhabba, they're just two faces of the same coin. They're two faces of the same coin. That's discussion for another point, you know, another time. But really, you know, they're, well, we should at least have Khawf and Khasiyat that protects us from sin, and we should have some Muhabba that compels us to do Amal al right? So Quran is a source of guidance, but you have to be Allah conscious. You have to have some taqwa, you have to have some ihsan, you have to really want guidance to be guided, right? And so it does bring certainty, it brings anchor, you know, it helps us to anchor ourselves in our lives. But there are some prerequisites to it. There are certain things that Allah demands us and demands of us, and we need to bring it. Allah, otherwise, we will keep We'll, we'll be stuck in, in doubts forever for the rest of our life. And we'll delude ourselves. And we'll be lying to ourselves. We'll be lying to others. You know, pretend, pretentious people. You know, people will call us good Muslims. But when we look inside, doubts, 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 doubts about everything. So be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this beautiful month of Ramadan. Help us realize taqwa, help us realize ihsan, help us be attached to the Qur'an. Give us certainty. Haqqul yaqeen. This is why we do all the zikr and muraqbat. Haqqul yaqeen. May Allah Ta'ala bless us with fanai qalbi and fanai nafsi and this constant state of mushahida. Amin ya Rabbul Alameen. Alhamdulillah.